Um, okay, our next uh, our next speaker is Asa Needle, and Asa should just come right yeah. up. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, uh, Penn and Emily, for speaking before me and really setting that amazing context. I'm really humbled to be uh, up on stage here with um, all these people that have been doing the solidarity economy work a long, longer than I have. Um, these people, all the people that have spoken so far today, have given a very thanks, a very broad idea of the different kinds of economic and social initiatives that are happening in all the different parts of this. So I want to talk a little more personally about my experience in Worcester and what the solidarity economy has meant to me and my experience. Uh, I got into this whole funky, not to say alternative, but new way of thinking uh, very young. Uh, I was introduced to it through a local place called the Stone Soup Community Center, which a lot of local people like Matt and other people in the audience have been a part of. Uh, it was this really, amazing place. There was a fire there two years ago. We've been in the process of rebuilding, hoping to open um, this winter. And that's been really exciting for me, see the rebirth of that place where all my organizing and activist experience has really started. Stone Soup was an activist and community center that brought together lots of different organizations in the same space. It was one of those places where you walked in and was instantly connected to any number of different organizations and advocacy groups and businesses that were all striving in the same kind of broad mission of imagining a new way of living. And it really reminds me when we talk about the way that the solidarity economy connects youth groups and businesses and politicians and community organizers to be in that place and to think how important it is to have not just networks that exist on a theoretical level or an ideological level, but also on a physical level, to have those people connected here in space. I'm really glad that we aren't all Skyping here today, that I get the chance to shake hands with you and be in the same physical space with you, because those kinds of mutual connections are what the real foundation of the solidarity economy means to me. Um, one of the ways that... There's so many great stories about the way that different organizations connected at Stone Soup, but one I want to tell is, there was a time when um, a small school was running out of Stone Soup, called the Stone Soup uh, Learning Cooperative, and we were running a play. And in the process of writing the play, right next door, there was the ex-prisoner rights group, Epoca, which was doing their big campaign for com uh, criminal offender record information uh, forms to be reformed. Um, the kind of laws that prevent ex-convicts from getting jobs and advancing in their careers later on in life after they've already paid for their crimes. So in the process of writing this play, um, we were, were right next door to the Worcester Roots Project, with which I now work, and we're right next door to this um, organization that's fighting for this policy, and it came to be that this play called The Dragon Sorcerer incorporated some of those themes into the play, and that in the closing act, there's a sphinx and earlier in, the, earlier in the play, it's spelled out that he can't get a job because of his quarry. And he's just stuck eating dusty travelers and telling riddles for the rest of his life, doing minimum wage jobs. And finally, at the end, they pass the quarry reform. And he's able to get a job as a pizza person. And it's just, and there's a musical number, and it was just this amazing, amazing example of all these different, this weird soup, real stone soup, this weird ether, this broth which brought all these people together and the amazing things that are birthed from it. Uh, I want to show, uh, in the spring of this year, we did a little event called the Co-op Caravan, where we traveled around the city and sort of highlighted all the different economic and social initiatives which were um, expressing that sort of cooperative mission, uh, those ideas of mutual aid, solidarity, uh, inclusivity, and pluralism that everyone's been talking about today. So I just want to show a short YouTube video, if we can um, call that up. We uh, showcased this, this at the uh, uh, Federation of Worker Cooperatives Conference. Oh, I forgot. My, my giant head is in this one, too. <laughs> we all know the old way of business just isn't working. The journey with us into the future of our economy, the co op. <laughs> Where a group of 
routines use plants to get the lead out of soil. So I'm a member of Classic Soil Busters Project Cooperative. Um, we can be inside of the Worcester Roots Project, which is a nonprofit that promotes uh, co-ops that have missions that involve social and environmental justice in Worcester. We take perennial plants, plant them in lead soil, and then the theory is they soak up this lead, and then you throw them out, and you have this uh, clean, relatively uh, thin, uh, cost-effective way of giving up lead soil. So we follow this democratic consensus-based process where all the youth are involved. Uh, we use horizontal democratic decision-making. Where waffles aren't just waffles. We are a pop-up community development brunch. Anything, you know, make a food and doesn't try to waffle. Uh, and we do a monthly community dinner on that, uh, trying to uh, you know figure out other ways that we can do social change within the within the model of a for-profit or productive business. Where community makes your leaky house energy efficient. We spend four or five hours clocking and um, weather stripping and uh, insulating pipes and. Um, and then we party. Where anyone can build their own bike and get around using no fossil fuels. I'm going to guys what the shop looks like. If they're under the age of 17, they have to help for five hours. If they're 17 or older, they have to help for 10 hours. And they get a bike. We can build special bikes. We build trailers and bike power generators and all that stuff is built here. Where ex-prisoners make your sustainable biofuel. We were trying to figure out how can we give back, how can Epoca uh, make this situation a lot better for people with criminal weapons. Um, so they decided, hey, we're going to put together this uh, co-op in Power Energy. So the Power Energy co-op came out of Epoca. Um, and it was basically to create sustainable jobs, create uh, a, a place where we're worker owners, that we uh, have the responsibility of continuing this, this, this great um, business and making a stride. We make uh, locally produced, um, locally harvested, uh, recycled vegetable oil through a chemical process with biodiesel. Where class people share space and make giant swords. Um, we're all part of Blank Slate. We share tools um, and we sometimes share materials more or less, uh, help each other out, work with each other sometimes, sometimes alone. Where fires turn into blue green coalitions. Um, so it's a collective of um, social justice, environmental justice organizations, and artists. They came together, they uh, were able to buy this house, and as you know, the uh, fire that occurred in 2009 destroyed much of it. So everybody participates in making decisions. And this wonderful thing is happening now during the renovation, going to open up the building to anyone who's interested to get the basic trainings that they need in order to get into any of the building trades. Where you frame landscape and co-op with no bosses. Where natural healthy local food doesn't bust your budget. More access to healthy, inexpensive food. And we source as many um, products as possible from local producers. Where youth grow thousands of pounds of food in the city. So we grow uh, 2,500 pounds of food every summer on our two farms. And we grow almost all the ingredients that go into the house ourselves, with the exception of oil, lime juice, and salt. Where people live, cook, and make decisions together. Well, the reason why they wanted to start was to make cooperative living affordable, and then eventually we started a cooperative development fund to, that we put money into each month in order to buy our own home as a cooperative. As a co-op, you know, you're working as a team and you're working collectively to really accomplish something, not just for ourselves, but our community. There's something really beautiful about that power and that strength in numbers that creates so much more. Where people from the streets hold peace circles and change lives. We have a peace circle that's here, we kind of like, you know, get to that root cause of why they were at where they was at, and um, how can we help them get out of that that vicious cycle that you know 
you know, a lot of men of color go through, you know. Where graphic artists come together to explore their creative passions. Welcome back to the present. Now get out there and make this future economy happen today. I always get a little happy seeing all the different stuff that's happening in Worcester. Um, in, in the fact is that most of the people in Worcester don't know about all this stuff that's happening. Uh, I know that video makes it seem like there's, there's so much ha stuff that's happening, but a lot of it is really beneath the surface and not in the main current of the dialogue about how to improve the city. It's very much outside, not necessarily alternative, but really essential in its own way. It just isn't uh, seen as essential when talking about uh, community development. Uh, a few things I want to draw out about this video. One is that it was produced by a youth worker cooperative, uh, Future Focus Media, which is representing here today a video game. Give it up for them. And um, initiatives like that and talking with soul busters, which I am uh, more involved with, are examples of this kind of, um, that, that the solidarity economy isn't exclusive. That you can have these kinds of models without excluding people in low-income neighborhoods, without excluding people of color, without excluding youth, without excluding old people, without excluding people that don't have access to the kind of connections that we do here uh, in these kinds of organizations. The other uh, thing that I want to draw out is the real way in which the advantages of having these kind of networks that cross-cut all these artificial divisions is that things come out of them that you would never imagine. For example, the Empower Energy Cooperative that Scott here is involved with um, was really this, this advocacy group, Epica, which organizes around legislation, which organizes around having walk-in centers for ex-prisoners to get um, their records sealed. That organization, through exposure with uh, cooperative incubators like the Worcester Roots Project, um, birthed this idea of having a biodiesel fuel cooperative. And that this sort of cross-section of ideas and cross-pollination is really what the solidarity economy is all about. Um, uh, toxic Soil Busters, which I'm involved with, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Worcester Roots Project, which is personally um, my, the work that I do, uh, we're uh, going to be in Stone Soup starting in the um, winter and we're excited to be back in that uh, connection of all different organizations. And um, what we do is we're a cooperative incubator. So we take um, different ideas that people have for cooperatives and we uh, try to think of ourselves as a launching pod for them. Right now we're incubating three cooperatives, the uh, Toxic Soil Busters, which do uh, lead safe landscaping and uh, lead soil testing as well as environmental justice outreach and the Youth in Charge Cooperative, which does uh, the same kind of work in the housing development in Plumley Village in the Bell Hill area over on a specific side of Worcester. And of course we have the uh, fantastic Future Focus Media Cooperative. Um, Worcester Roots Project was my entry point, not just from being a part of this community, but being an active member organizing. And the more that I travel around and talk to you all today, uh, I hope that uh, I'll learn some new things. Thank you very much.